Hi guys, today, which is yesterday for you people watching this on April 27th, 2022, your boy Mark Bennett just signed his first NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, which allowed me to watch the uh, press conference for the new Sony 24 to 70 G Master version two lens, 2.8. And uh, the only thing I can say, they defied the laws of physics. That is all I can say. And yes, I am a rocket scientist in my mind. Let's talk about it. So Sony recently sent me this, which is the 70 to 200 G Master version two, which I will be doing in a review coming up in a few days and this thing has blown my mind and it has made me want the 24 to 70 that they just released so badly i don't even know where to start with this lens you guys maybe you've already watched a bunch of gerald undones and their ilk that have had the lens and have been testing it for 17 months or whenever sony gave it to them so i can only go by what I saw on the press release and it was quite in depth and it uh, didn't make any sense to me how good this lens was at, uh, at the size that it was. Let me read you off a little uh, specky thing. Okay, one of the headlines of this thing, it is the smallest and lightest 24 to 70 2.8 that you can currently purchase and not buy a little bit. It is 695 grams. The next closest lens is the Nikon and that is 800 and five grams the sigma is 830 and the canon is 900 so 695 grams and it's also a much smaller lens than the previous version of the 2470 from sony it is basically about 20 percent smaller and lighter which is crazy to me because it's also better in every single way now this lens has a huge focus on video as well as photo which is i think the thing that sony does the best they understand that many many people have shifted to not just photos they want brilliant photo cameras with perfect lenses but they also want those lenses and those cameras to work fantastically with video this is why my cameras are generally sony cameras i got the little zv e10 over here and i have the sony a7 IV over here and the fact is i love these cameras because it lets me do both of those things at a very high level both photos and videos and since Sony understands that, they kept saying it in the press conference over and over again. Like, hey, man, we're focused on video. I'm like, good, good on you, because that's what I do. I don't take very good pictures, but I can do some video, I tell you what. I mean, I can take okay photos. I mean, they're probably award-winning, Pulitzer Prize-winning photos. But you know what I mean. It's just I'm better at video. Now, weight is one thing. You want the lens to be light and small, but there's also another factor which a lot of people don't think about, and that is balance. Like, when you look at this thing here, this, the 70 to 200, you would think, boy, that must be a heavy lens. And I tell you what, not only is it a pretty light lens, look at this, I got an A7 III here, one hand in it, no problem. I know, I mean, I'm a physical specimen, but the fact is, I'm pretty sure anybody can handhold this thing. And part of it is that the lens is so well balanced. It is just, just something about the center of gravity that is perfect, even at the end of the camera here. And uh, if this is any indication, when they talk about how well balanced the 24 to 70 is, I really believe them. This is a very nice shooting experience here, even with a long telephoto lens. So the 24 to 70, I think will be uh, quite a nice little lens to take around in your hand. Oh, and it's got my favorite feature of lenses right now. It's got uh, this clicky, this clicky aperture. I love a clicky aperture. You can de-click it as well, which video people are really gonna like because you de-click the aperture ring and you can move the aperture ring smoothly for all sorts of great effects. But I love a uh, clicky aperture ring so I know where I am and it sticks and you can also lock it to click and I love that very much. It also has two focus hold buttons on the 24 to 70. It's got that 11 blade aperture creating that very nice bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. And it looks it fantastic. From the pictures that I've seen, you don't see that onion ringing. You don't see all that crazy cat's eye or that stop sign looking bokeh. You see just nice round balls, you know? <laughs> You know I'm 44 years old. It's got this new nano air coating, which, you know, I'm, again, I'm going by the pictures that they showed me, but the ghosting and the flaring is so well controlled. It's crazy. They have the sun 
in the background of these pictures and they're shooting into full sunlight and I am seeing the ghosting and the flare so well controlled. I cannot wait to test it. If I didn't tell you yet, they're gonna send me the lens so that I can test it out for you guys. And uh, it's just, you know, as soon as all the fancy people are done with it, the make art nows and the iPhone does and the, the Jared Polans. Jared Poland. Brown as a head head. Probably Tony and Chelsea, Potato Jet. Manny Ortiz. There's a lot of people ahead of me. The autofocus is crazy fast. You can do apparently up to 30 frames per second if you have an A1 camera. I don't, so I don't have to worry about that. But still, to be able to get 30 frames per second while using the autofocus, that, that's bonkers. It's insane. It defies the laws of physics. Oh, folks breathing. Virtually none from all of the clips that they showed me. There was like no focus breathing whatsoever. Maybe a tiny bit. I, I couldn't see any. Honestly, in the clips they showed, I couldn't see any focus breathing. And also like with the uh, a7 IV that I have here and the FS, FX6, you can use uh, the focus breathing compensation if there is any focus breathing, but I really didn't see it. So no matter what Sony camera you have, including something like an a7 III, I think that it's such a great thing to have the no focus breathing if you are going to be using it for video and not just video, if you're doing landscape photography, which I like to do in my spare time. Sometimes I do rocket science as a hobby and sometimes I do landscape photography. And if you uh, are doing stacking photos of landscape photography where you're focusing on different points, then you don't want a lot of focus breathing in your lens. So I think it is very important to have a lens that doesn't have focus breathing, not just for video, but for photo as well. And Sony, they get it. So there's a linear response in the manual focusing, which means you can repeat your focus pulls, which is once again, very beneficial for video. Oh, and it has great minimum focusing distance at 24 millimeters when it's zoomed all the way out, it is 21 centimeters. So, you know, it's like that from the lens, which is really good for a zoom lens. And also at the 70 millimeters, it is a 31 centimeters, or about 31 centimeters, is that right? Oh, 30, 30 centimeters. And uh, which, you know, is about the length of a ruler. And when you're zoomed in to 70 millimeters and you're only 30 centimeters away, you can get some nice macro shots. This one here, the uh, 70 to 200 also has a good minimum focusing distance. So you can get really close up to the lens here and get some nice macro shots. I will show that in my review coming up. And the price is coming in at $22.99. And while not free, that is certainly a reasonable price for a 24 to 70 2.8 with all of these features at this size and at this weight with that focus breathing or lack thereof and all of the fantastic features that come with that lens. Boy, oh boy. Hey, maybe if enough people watch this video, my wife won't lose her mind when I do buy this lens. So please like it, share it amongst your pals so that I can get this lens for the love of God. And who is the lens for besides me? Well, pretty much anybody. If you have the budget for this lens, the 24 to 70 is pretty much a staple in every pro photographer's and now pro videographer's kit. It is just whatever you want to do. If you're doing video work, if you're doing weddings, if you're doing portraits, whatever it is you want to do, a 24 to 70 is such a versatile lens. Some people call that focal length the most boring focal length, which basically means it is the most used focal length. Everybody uses this under every circumstance. So to have a lens with this type of quality, oh boy, oh boy, it, it's good. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because they are gonna send me this lens and I will be able to review it for you before probably it is released for sale so that you can see what the lens can do in the hands of a true professional, you know? Not like Jared Poland, Tony and Chelsea, Manny Ortiz, all these guys who get paid to shoot professionally. You know what? This is the guy you wanna to listen to right here. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. Think it'd be weird if I got a paper route to pay for this thing?